Hello, my name is USS Omega-1 and this is book review number two, the Star Wars Republic Commando series. These five books are written by Karen Travis and they cover the Star Wars Republic Commandos of the Star Wars universe. And subsequently in book number five, the Imperial Commando 501st. These books end on a cliffhanger. There was meant to be subsequent books written by Karen Travis, but unfortunately LucasArts decided to change direction of the, story, of the way the story was meant to go by creating the animated series Star Wars Clone Wars, which clashed with the storyline being written by Karen Travis in these books. And subsequently, the, the, fifth, the sixth and seventh books, I should say, were never written. These are outstanding books. I have read every single one of them cover to cover multiple times and found them to be thoroughly enjoyable. They cover everything from the finer military detail of what it meant to be a soldier of the Republic, specifically a commando, the special forces of the Republic, from the first contact battle after the Battle of Geonosis on their first operations outside of that disaster on Geonosis, to everything to Order 66 and then ultimately to becoming Imperial Commandos of the 501st Vader's Fist. They deal with issues around their Mandalorian training sergeants, who train them as obviously clone soldiers on Kamino with the Mandalorian Jango Fett. They deal with issues around why the population of Coruscant and other planets didn't seem to react badly or rebelliously when the Jedi were destroyed. I mean, I know the Empire, the Emperor Palpatine said that the Jedi tried to overthrow the Council, but not one person protested when they were all slaughtered, including the young children in the Jedi Temple by the clone troopers. These books deal with why the population had simply grown to distrust and despise the Jedi, which, as you know from the movies, they themselves couldn't even sense the dark side coming. So these books touch on why that happened. If anyone's watched the movies and ever wondered, you know, why did nobody get upset? These books will help you explain that. They cover everything that I think is missing from the TV show, The Mandalorian, when it comes to Mandalorian culture. Um, the way the Mandalorians are portrayed in the books is far superior to the way they're portrayed on the TV show. Now, that's not to say that the TV show The Mandalorian with Pedro Pascal is not good. It's fantastic. I loved watching every episode of it, and I waited with bated breath for the next episode to be released. And I'm, I'm looking forward to watching season two. But in the books, I think The Mandalorians are superior to the way they're portrayed in the TV show. The military detail that Karen Travis goes into, the little things about their equipment and how soldiers act and talk, is acknowledged in the cover of every one of these books. She herself says, and I'll, I'll just do it for the camera here, let me just open this up, with her special thanks, as all authors do. do, 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 do. Let me see here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. She herself was a former defense correspondent. Uh, I won't put it in front of the camera. I'll just read it. A former defense correspondent and TV and news journalist. Karen Travis has also worked as a police press officer and an advertising copywriter and journalism lecturer. She served in the Royal Naval Auxiliary Service and the Territorial Army. So she herself has military experience. She's been in and around military and police uh, through her journalistic work so she got a lot of the details right and you can tell if you've ever served either professionally or reservist like Karen would herself would have been in the reserve services of land sea or air in any of your countries I highly recommend these books they are fantastic I've had them for nearly 10 years I've read them all cover to cover and it, it really breaks my heart when I get to the last book here the 501st the Imperial Commando because I know There'll never be a conclusion to it. It's absolutely brilliant, is all I can say. And I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. These are actually the only Star Wars books I have. I have shelves of, of books. Everything from Suetonius, the Twelve Caesars, to Star Wars and Star Trek fiction. But I my Star Trek books outnumber these nearly five to one. 
each. <laughs> but I, these are the only Star Wars books I've ever enjoyed reading. And I highly recommend them to anybody out there. So that's it. That's my very brief book review of these. Um, I only wish there had been more. I only wish that the Star Wars movies had portrayed, had any of the, uh, the writing or character portrayal that is in these books. I only wish the TV series, The Mandalorian, had any, had even an ounce of the Mandalorian culture displayed in these books. And that's it. Hopefully, at some point in time in the future, Disney will allow Karen Travis to write more of these books without it being canonical to the Star Wars series and TV shows and so on that they're making. But I doubt it. Unfortunately, Disney and LucasArts tend to make their movies and TV shows and things like that for the younger audience because the teenagers and children who watch these shows have a lot of money, i.e. their parents' money. Whereas people like myself in their 30s who enjoy these books and would enjoy the more realism written and portrayed on the, on the, the big screen, the big and small screen, I should say, just are not their target audience. And it's a true shame. I think that the Star Wars universe is a poorer place for not having more of what's portrayed in these books in it. And that's it. My name is USS Omega One. Hopefully this brief little book review, you'll have liked it. And if you did, you'll hit the like button. And if you would like to see more, please hit the subscription button. Until we meet again.